Ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about an article that's in our April 2008 edition of our magazine. Gary Stearman has written it, and he's entitled it, Rapture-itis, Affliction or Comfort? Gary, what is rapture-itis? Well, J.R., rapture-itis is a term actually used by uh, 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 other than Christians. Uh, it's usually a term used to lampoon Christians who believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ, particularly uh, his coming in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, without any forewarning whatsoever. Rapture-itis. Uh, I think maybe I have a touch of it myself. The symptoms uh, were recently described to us by a friend of the ministry. He, he wrote to us and gave us seven symptoms. Uh, number one, a strange desire to see a man who was executed as a common criminal almost 2,000 years ago and was resurrected. Number two, a belief that this man will someday suddenly show up in the clouds with a shout and take believers away to paradise. Uh, do these symptoms sound familiar? Uh, I don't have time to read all seven. The seventh one, an almost perpetual smile and inner peace because of perceived hope, commonly referred to as the blessed hope. Well, if you've read the epistles of Paul, you know what the blessed hope is. <laughs> Rapturitis. Rapturitis. I think I've got a touch of it. Yes. And, um, of course, he uh, also mentions in this article that it's sometimes called rapture fever. Well, I want you to know that we live in one of the most exciting times of history. We have done with this 6,000 years of human history. We have now entered into the seventh millennium. We are in the dawning of the seventh millennium. And the rabbis taught centuries ago that the seventh millennium would be the messianic era. We are awaiting Jesus' return. And the Jews are looking for the Messiah. So, even they've got a touch of itis of some kind. <laughs> of some sort, yes. Now, J.R., the, the rapture uh, is an interesting concept in, on several levels. Number one, uh, the patience of the saints. One of the most difficult parts of Christianity is the patient waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, imminently, without any forewarning whatsoever, no prophetic fulfillment. He could show up at any second. This has been true since the days of the apostles, and during those millennia, uh, thousands of Christians have sort of given up, turned away, and said, oh, I'm tired of waiting. I'm not sure I even believe in the rapture anymore. Others have become so feverish about the rapture uh, that they get into a kind of a state of hysteria and begin to make all kinds of outlandish predictions. Like now, date setting. Date setting. <laughs> now, the, the art of, uh, of uh, watchful waiting, called the patience of the saints, is, is to wait uh, in a stable fashion, let's say, without getting too excited, uh, somewhere between fever on the one hand and ice-cold disdain on the other. Right down the middle, the daily hoping for the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we try to position ourselves. Especially in the last 40 years, since 1967 and the Six-Day War, there have been a lot of talk about rapture. I recall... Hal Lindsey's wonderful book, The Late Great Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. um, in it, he has a chapter wherein he describes what would happen at the rapture. Absolutely. In fact, that chapter is chapter 7 of his book called The Ultimate Trip. You know, and The Ultimate Trip he described as a time when Christians will be suddenly caught away almost in a violent fashion. Cars would careen off the highway. Airliners being piloted by Christians would, would uh, fall out of the sky. Uh, uh, he envisioned the United Nations uh, suddenly people speaking, disappearing out of their chairs. He envisioned uh, a church in which a pastor is speaking to practically no one <laughs> because many of those in, the, uh, in, in his audience ha had uh, mysteriously disappeared. In other words, he dramatized something that had only formerly been a theological idea. 
And J.R., that book went around the world like wildfire. We all remember 1970 and the late great planet Earth. Uh, J.R., there had been many men prior to Hal Lindsey. Starting back in the mid-19th century uh, with John Nelson Darby. There was C.I. Schofield, uh, the Bible study movement. Uh, there, w there was the launch of the Zionist movement, uh, Clarence Larkin. Uh, many men had written about the rapture. There was one man who in 1954 wrote a book called Rethinking the Rapture. His name was E. Schuyler English. Dr. English had been on the editorial board of the new Schofield Reference Bible, the Pilgrim Bible, an absolutely ingenious Greek scholar, and he wrote a little book called Rethinking the Rapture back in 1954, but J.R., it didn't take off and sell millions of copies. It didn't dramatize the rapture, it rather clarified the scripture. So somewhere between dramatization and clarification, that's where we are today. Now, E. Schuyler English had a tremendous knowledge of the Greek, and he gave, in this book you're talking about, mm -hmm. a, a um, commentary on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and that's basically where our focus wants to lie today. We want to show you what E. Schuyler English wrote back in 1954. And we, of course, just happen to agree wholeheartedly with his concept there. <laughs> yes, and we do. And we hold to a pre-tribulation rapture. There are some people who say, well, the rapture's going to come, but it's going to come during the tribulation mm -hmm. period, and some after the tribulation period, which means that Christians are going to go through this terrible time when they'll have to refuse the mark of the beast and see the rise of the Antichrist and all of this. What's going to happen? Why... Why would Dr. English say that we are going to be taken out before the tribulation period? Well, J.R., he begins by, by mentioning f uh, four basic end-time views. Pre-tribulationism, the Lord's going to come before the tribulation. Mid-tribulationism, uh, the teaching that will be taken out in the middle. Uh, Post-tribulationism, which suggests that it'll be after the time of Jacob's trouble or the day of the Lord that the church will be taken out. And partial rapturism, which is that you'll only go in, in a rapture based upon your fidelity uh, to, to the teachings of the Lord and to following his way. Now, Gary, he wrote this in 1954. Yes. And those very themes are prevalent really prevalent and popular in Christian circles today. Oh, Isn't yes. that amazing? It's as if he was, uh, could, could see into the future about 50 years <laughs> or 55 years and yeah. nailed it. He nailed it exactly what Christians are going to be thinking. Now, good, born-again, blood-bought Christians can believe in strange things and still be saved, okay? Sure. And that's what I think he was... Uh, uh, kept in mind, as he said, there would be these kinds of things, you know, like yeah. we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, but some believe in a mid-tribulation rapture, and some believe in a post-tribulation rapture, and some believe in a partial rapture if you're good enough to go, and yeah. those who aren't good enough are going to have to stay behind till a later time. It's amazing. Yeah, and he me. said that any of these four views uh, is possible in the life of a blood-bought believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you can believe any of those four because we're not talking about the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in salvation. We're rather talking about something entirely removed from the essential element of salvation. Uh, and he said that his studies took him to this position. He said, I like the pre-tribulation rapture. He says, I think it's the correct view because it is the one that fits the facts. He says, of the four views, it alone flows out of the literal reading of Scripture. Now, that's where I start. That's where J.R. starts. We like to read the Bible literally. Some will scoff at us for reading the Bible literally, but if, uh, if those people want to scoff, let them scoff. Now, he has a chapter called Rest With Us, mm -hmm. or actually it's called That Day Shall Not Come Except. So let's go to Second Thessalonians mm -hmm. and see what he had to say 